What's up, everybody? And today we're checking out something special. Admiral, Admiral McRaven, McRaven leaves audience speechless. One of the best motival, motivational speeches. This is U.S. Navy Admiral William H. McRaven, one of the most decorated U.S. commanders, delivered one of the best mot motivational speeches you ever you will ever hear. I can't talk for some reason, guys. Um, as a obviously former Royal Marines commando, I love a good motivational speech by an officer. It always helps with the morale for the lads. Uh, this is obviously a U.S. Uh, commander, which is very interesting. Five years ago, um, so it's a little bit older than we usually watch. 37 million views this got, so it must be a good speech. It's a little bit longer than videos that we usually do. We don't usually watch videos this long, so um, let's enjoy it. Let's sit back. Let's figure out why I've literally been recommended this since the start of my channel. People have been telling me to watch this video, so... Let's watch it. Let's find out what this guy's got to say and let's see if it is motivational. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Helps out mysterious YouTube algorithm. And if you want to watch the video about me waffling over the top of it, you can certainly do that by clicking the description. You will see it on the first line of the description. Let's check this out, shall we? And while these lessons were learned during my time in the military... Okay, let's rewind it a little what bit. What starts here changes the world. I will be pausing it every now and again. I have a few suggestions that may help you on your way to a better world. And while these lessons were learned during my time in the military, I can assure you that it matters not whether you ever served a day in uniform. It's not going to keep, like, putting random montages on of people over the top of it, is it? I guess it is. But we can listen to it anyway. I'm sure it'll be... Look at the freaking... Look at all these metal ribbons he's got. Holy. The guy's decked out, isn't it? Isn't that the Navy SEAL badge as well? Was he in the SEALs? It matters not your gender, your ethnic or religious background, your orientation, or your social status. Our struggles in this world are similar, and the lessons to overcome those struggles and to move forward, changing ourselves and changing the world around us, will apply equally to all. Okay. So here are the 10 lessons I learned from basic SEAL training it was a seal. that hopefully will be of value to you as you move forward in life. First thing he says... First lesson, who's going to carry the boats? <laughs> oh, my days. I, I, I have to pause it every now and again, guys. Otherwise, I get copyright claim. But I do want to put dialogue onto it as well and, and kind of elaborate on some of these points he's saying, all right? Every morning in SEAL training, my instructors, who at the time were all Vietnam veterans, would show up in my barracks room. And the first thing they'd do was inspect my bed. If you did it right... The corners would be square, the covers would be pulled tight, the pillow centered just under the headboard, and the extra blanket folded neatly at the foot of the rack. It was a simple task, mundane at best, but every morning we were required to make our bed to perfection. Mm, it seemed a little yes. ridiculous at the time, particularly in light of the fact that we were aspiring to be real warriors, tough, battle-hardened seals. But the wisdom of this simple act has been proven to me many times over. It is such a simple thing that is incredibly effective. And it, there's a reason why it's one of the most, like one of the most taught things in the military, simply making your bed. And it's not just making your bed, it's being precise, attention to detail. It does many things like sets your day off, right? It helps improve admin overall, like gives you a sense of pride in your admin. There's so many benefits to doing it. It's crazy. If you make your bed every morning, it's going to talk about it now. you will have accomplished the first task of the day. Yeah. It will give you a small sense of pride and it will encourage you to do another task and another and another. And by the end of the day, that one task completed will have turned into many tasks completed. True. Making your bed will also reinforce the fact that the little things in life matter. If you can't do the little things right, you'll never be able to do the big things right. Oh, th oh, yes. If you can't do the little things right, you're never going to do the big things. Oh, that resonates. And if by chance you have a miserable day, you will come home to a bed that is made. Mmm, yes. That you made. And a made bed gives you encouragement that tomorrow will be better. So if you want to change the world, start off by making your bed. Oh my God. So simple yet true. It's so simple, guys. It really is that simple. What a great first point. 
Oh, like 10 points he said he's going to do. Music doesn't have to get During SEAL training, the students... During training, the students are all broken down into boat crews. Each crew is seven students, three on each side of a small rubber boat, and one coxswain to help guide the dinghy. Mm. Every day, your boat crew forms up on the beach and is instructed to get through the surf zone and paddle several miles down the coast. In the winter, the surf off San Diego can get to be eight to ten feet high. Ooh. And it is exceedingly difficult to paddle through the plunging surf unless everyone digs in. You know, I kind of wish I did something like SEALs training. Obviously, I was in the British commandos and we do a lot of water stuff, right? But there's something about the beach exercises that they do in the SEALs that I've always kind of wanted to give a try. I feel like most Royal Marines commandos with their fitness would be able to do SEAL training as well. That's a given. Like, they say at the end of Royal Marines training that you are fit enough to be in special forces. The only thing that's stopping you is injury and experience. Like, it's very common to be injured after 32 weeks of training. I would have loved to have done something like that. Every paddle must be synchronized to the stroke count of the coxswain. Mm. Everyone must exert equal effort or the boat will turn against the wave and be unceremoniously dumped back on the beach. For the boat to make it to its destination, everyone must paddle. You can't change the world alone. You will need some help. And to truly get from your starting point to your destination takes friends, colleagues, the goodwill of strangers, and a strong coxswain to guide you. If you want to change the world, find someone to help you paddle. Oh, oh. They say you're the average of the five people you hang around with the most. And that means everyone. That means your family. That means your siblings. That means your parents. The people you are around the most, the five people around you are around the most, you're the average of. And if you find someone that'll help you through tough times, right, you're going to become a better person. You'll help them through tough times and you'll work together and you will grow as a body of men, as they would say in the Royal Marines. Oh, what a great point. Find someone to help you through life. Yes. Yes. Over People a few you can weeks of on. training, my SEAL class, which started with 150 men, was down to just 42. There were now six boat crews of seven men each. I was in the boat with the tall guys, but the best boat crew we had was made up of the little guys, the Munchkin crew, we called them. <laughs> no one was over five foot five. Holy. The Munchkin boat crew had one American Indian, one African American. One Polish American, one Greek American, one Italian American, and two tough kids from the Midwest. Holy. They out paddled, out ran, and out swam all the other boat crews. The big men in the other boat crews would always make good natured fun of the tiny little flippers the Munchkins put on their tiny little feet prior to every <laughs> swim. But somehow these little guys from every corner of the nation and the world always had the last laugh. Swimming faster than everyone and reaching the shore long before the rest of us. Damn. SEAL training was a great equalizer. Nothing mattered but your will to succeed. Not your color, not your ethnic background, not your education, not your social status. Christ, this guy's good. Unbelievable. What's his name again? Admiral McRaven. One second, let me just do a quick cheeky Google. Oh my, has he got a book? Oh no. Your boy's going to buy that book. Make Your Bed is one of his books. The Wisdom of the Bullfrog. Oh, he's got a few books. Sea Stories, The Hero Code. Ah, your boy might be reading some of them books soon. Let me know what you think. If you want to change the world, measure a person by the size of their heart. Yes. Not by the size of their flippers. Yes. Several times a week, the instructors would line up the class and do a uniform inspection. It was exceptionally thorough. Your hat had to be perfectly starched, your uniform immaculately pressed, your belt buckle shiny and void of any smudges. But it seemed that no matter how much effort you put into starching your hat or pressing your uniform or polishing your belt buckle, it just wasn't good enough. The instructors would find something wrong. For failing uniform inspection, the student had to run, fully clothed, into the surf zone, then wet from head to toe, roll around on the beach until every part of your body was covered with sand. The effect was known as a sugar cookie. 
<laughs> sugar cookie. That's brilliant. You stayed in the uniform the rest of the day, cold, wet, and sandy. Nasty. There were many a student who just couldn't accept the fact that all their efforts were in vain, that no matter how hard they tried to get the uniform right, it went unappreciated. They do something, and I know i got to interject here a little bit, they do something similar in Royal Marines training where if you mess up, they do a beach run, which you might have seen it before. Uh, a mud run, sorry, not a beach run. It's got a mud run. Uh, you can tell it's been a long time. And basically the the estuary um, is just mud for, for a long time until the water comes in. And they'll make you go out there. They'll make you do all this crazy exercise for a long time. And it's horrific. But when they rinse you off before you go in, they don't fully rinse you off. And they make you basically roll across all the walls, get into your bed, get into your cupboard, get everything, everything dirty. And then you've got an inspection in like a couple of hours. And it's fucking horrific. Horrific. Anyway, let's listen to more. Those students didn't make it through training. Those students didn't understand the purpose of the drill. You were never going to succeed. You were never going to have a perfect uniform. The instructors weren't going to allow it. Sometimes, no matter how well you prepare or how well you perform, you still end up as a sugar cookie. <laughs> it's just the way life is sometimes. It's true. If you want to change the world, get over being a sugar cookie and keep moving forward. Yes. Every day during training, you were challenged with multiple physical events, long runs, long swims, My obstacle God, courses, this guy. hours of calisthenics, something designed to test your mettle. Every event had standards, times you had to meet. If you failed to meet those times, those standards, your name was posted on a list. And at the end of the day, those on the list were invited to a circus. A circus was two hours of additional calisthenics oh, designed to wear you down, to break your spirit, to force you to quit. Nasty. No one wanted a circus. A circus meant that for that day, you didn't measure up. Mm. A circus meant more fatigue, and more fatigue meant that the following day would be more difficult and more circuses were likely. Yeah. But at some time during SEAL training, everyone, everyone made the circus list. Yes. But an interesting, an interesting thing happened to those who were constantly on the list. Over time, those students who did two hours of extra calisthenics got stronger and stronger. Yes. The pain of the circuses built inner strength and physical resiliency. Life is filled with circuses. You will fail. You will likely fail often. It will be painful. Yeah, let me, let me interject there with something. In fact, he's gonna get to the end of this point and then I'll interject. It will be discouraging. At times, it will test you to your very core. But if you don't, if you want to change the world, don't be afraid of the circuses. Yes, yes. Don't be afraid to fail. Often, there's a um, there's a thing they they would say in Royal Marines training called pace to be a winner, right? And say you're doing camp circuits, right, and you're sprinting around the camp, and it's horrific. And you might get to the, everyone's done the fifth circuit. And then the PTI will be like, pays to be a winner. And basically like the first five people to get around get to stop and everyone else goes again. And then the next five people who are first stop and the rest go again. And basically if you're at the back end of that troop, like you're going to be doing an extra five or six laps compared to everyone else. And it fucking sucks. It's horrible. I've been there. It's horrible. It's genuinely horrible horrible you're running around you're seeing the lads getting picked maybe you're like oh i remember it happening to me where literally the guy that was like millimeters in front of me he was like oh yeah you get to stay luke jilling you crack on oh my god it's horrible but because of them extra camp circuits i started getting faster and if it wasn't for them camp circuits i wouldn't have got through bottom field pass out i wouldn't have done the nine mile speed match, the endurance course, the Taz and assault course, the 30 miler. I wouldn't have been able to do them if I didn't get that extra fizz. Pace to be a winner is important. Don't be afraid to fail because sometimes them failed lessons benefit you in ways you cannot even express or you don't even understand until years later. At least twice a week, the trainees were required to run the obstacle course. The obstacle course contained 25 obstacles, including a 10 foot wall, a 30 foot cargo net, a barbed wire crawl to name a few, but the most challenging obstacle was the slide for life. It had a three level 30 foot tower at one end and a one level tower at the other. In between was a 200 foot long rope. You had to climb the three tiered tower and once at the top, you grabbed the rope, swung underneath the rope, 
and pulled yourself hand over hand until you got to the other end. The record for the obstacle course had stood for years when my class began in 1977. The record seemed unbeatable until one day a student decided to go down the slide for life head first. Mm. Instead of swinging his body underneath the rope and inching his way down, he bravely mounted the top of the rope. That's how they teach us to go over ropes to the Marines on, on top of the rope like that. And thrust himself forward. It was a dangerous move, seemingly foolish and fraught with risk. Failure could mean injury and being dropped from the course. Without hesitation, the student slid down the rope perilously fast. Instead of several minutes, it only took him half that time. Mm. And by the end of the course, he had broken the record. Nice. If you want to change the world, sometimes you have to slide down the obstacles head first. <sighs> Mate, he's making some points here, isn't it? He is using examples perfectly in this speech right here. This is the what how many views has this got? 37 million views. No wonder. He his points are incredible. I gotta I gotta read this guy's book. During the land warfare phase of training, the students are flown out to San Clemente Island, which lies off the coast of San Diego. The waters off San Clemente are a breeding ground for the great white sharks. Nasta. To pass SEAL training, there are a series of long swims that must be completed. One is the night swim. Before the swim, the instructors joyfully brief the students on all the species of sharks <laughs> that inhabit the waters off San Clemente. They assure you, however, that no student has ever been eaten by a shark, at least not that they can remember. <laughs> but you are also taught that if a shark begins to circle your position, stand your ground. Mm. Do not swim away. Do not act afraid. And if the shark, hungry for a midnight snack, darts towards you, then summons up all your strength and punch him in the snout, and he will turn and swim away. Yes. There are a lot of sharks in the world. If you hope to complete the swim, you will have to deal with them. So if you want to change the world, don't back down from the sharks. As Navy SEAL... His points, guys. His, his book... What is it called again? He's got a couple in it. Make Your Bed. But then again, he's also got a newer one called The Wisdom of the Bullfrog. I'm going to have to read it, guys. Are you up... Listen here, everyone. Are you up for me reading these types of books? These motivational books. Books wrote by incredible people and then reviewing them on the channel. Let me know what you think because I think that's a solid idea. I really do. I really do. One of our jobs is to conduct underwater attacks against enemy shipping. We practice this technique ex extensively during training. The ship attack mission is where a pair of SEAL divers is dropped off outside an enemy harbor and then swims well over two miles underwater using nothing but a depth gauge and a compass to get to the target. Ugh. During the Nasty. entire swim, even well below the surface, there is some light that comes through. It is comforting to know that there is open water above you. But as you approach the ship, which is tied to a pier, the light begins to fade. The steel structure of the ship blocks the moonlight. It blocks the surrounding street lamps. It blocks all ambient light. To be successful in your mission, you have to swim under the ship and find the keel, the center line, and the deepest part of the ship. This is your objective. But the keel is also the darkest part of the ship, where you cannot see your hand in front of your face, where the noise from the ship's machinery is deafening, and where it gets to be easily disoriented, and you can fail. Every SEAL knows that under the keel, at that darkest moment of the mission, is a time when you need to be calm, when you must be calm. I can see why this guy's composed, an admiral. When all your tactical skills, your physical power, and your inner strength must be brought to bear. If you want to change the world, you must be your very best in the darkest moments. The ninth week of training is... Oh. Oh, let's just re let's just go back there a little bit. Step up when times are toughest. Step up 
when times are toughest. The, there's a saying, one of the ethos of the Royal Marines, and I, obviously I can only kind of reflect this back to the Royal Marines because that's my training. Cheerfulness in the face of adversity. And it's one thing you learn where things are genuinely really shit. You kind of learn to be cheerful and embrace that roughness, right? And it creates this is character creating, right? Like it, it, it creates character in a in a in a, in an individual where if you put them through crap and they all go through crap together and you really start like embracing it. It almost becomes ingrained. Now, let me know if you're if you're a former Marine, whether it's US or Royal Marine or Army, Para, whatever, and you've gone through some tough times. Can you agree with this same ethos that for some reason, when things get really shit, if you've been through hard training, it's almost as if you can see people crumbling around you and you go for a run. If you go for a run in a group and people are really struggling, they give up. And for some reason, you can't wrap your head around why people crumble so easy in them in them instances and i'm not saying that i don't crumble sometimes obviously everybody crumbles sometimes but it's almost as if you've got a higher tolerance for being in them tough like situations it's almost as if you from from being through this horrific training especially in the royal marines commandos where the training is genuinely horrific it's almost as you have you have a higher tolerance for being in dark places does that make sense? I bet there's a lot of people that can agree with me on that one. In the darkest moments. Two more points. The ninth week of training is referred to as Hell Week. It is six days of no sleep, constant physical and mental harassment, and one special day at the Mud Flats. The Mud Flats are an area between San Diego and Tijuana where the run water runs off and creates the Tijuana Sloughs, a swampy patch of terrain where the mud will engulf you. Mm. It is on Wednesday of Hell Week that you paddle down in the mud flats and spend the next 15 hours trying to survive this freezing cold, the howling wind, and the incessant pressure to quit from the instructors. As the sun began to set that Wednesday evening, my training class, having committed some egregious infraction of the rules, was ordered into the mud. The mud consumed each man till there was nothing visible but our heads. The instructors told us we could leave the mud if only five men would quit. Oh, some of the incentives that instructors give you are horrific. I remember uh, it being absolutely hammering it down. We'd been on exercise. We're out training. It's been We've been out for ages. It must have been upwards of a week, and we're just cold. We're wet. We're near the end of it. It was horrific. And if I remember correctly, it was my 17th birthday as well, actually. And it was absolutely disgusting. And the training team, they pull up one of the Land Rovers, next to us all we're all outside it's dark but it's rain horrible it's genuinely horrible and we've been out there for days and days maybe even weeks i can't remember and they just open the back of the land rover and there's like food there it's like a can of coke there's a warm meal you can smell the bacon it's warm it's dry and they're just like lads if anyone wants to go and sit in the back of the van and call it a day you can do it and the, the psychological terror is just horrific. And one of the best things that gets you through that are the lads next to you. I remember, I remember thinking, all right, I'm quitting. And I remember we finished this thing and everyone's leaving. And I was just sat there and there was a lad from Manchester who saw me. And he, obviously I'm, I'm from Manchester as well. So we kind of bonded a little bit. He saw me sat there and he knew I was going to quit. He knew I was 16 years old. And I was really struggling. I knew all my brother and his friends were out in university partying. I'm in Royal Marines training at 16 in the mud. Been out there for days. Hungry. So hungry. And he could see I was going to quit. And he came over. He's like, Jillings, there's no fucking way I'm going to let you quit this. There's no way. And he, he just helped me up. And we cracked on together. And we did it. And I ended up getting a green lid. It's the lads next to you that help you with that five men just five men and we could get out of the oppressive cold looking around the mud flat it was apparent that some students were about to give up no it was still over eight hours till the sun came up eight more hours of bone chilling cold the chattering teeth and the shivering moans of the trainees were so loud it was hard to hear anything and then 
one voice began to echo through the night. One voice raised in song. The song was terribly out of tune, but sung with great enthusiasm. One voice became two, and two became three, and before yes. long, everyone in the class was singing. The instructors threatened us with more time in the mud if we kept up the singing, but the singing persisted, and somehow the mud seemed a little warmer. Yes. And the wind a little tamer, and the dawn not so far away. Yes. If I have learned anything in my time traveling the world, it is the power of hope. The power of one person, a Washington, a Lincoln, King, Mandela, and even a young girl from Pakistan, Malala. One person can change the world by giving people hope. Ooh. So if you want to change the Ooh. world, start singing when you're up to your neck in mud. Oh, it's so true. I remember them waking us up on exercise at like two in the morning. And they lined us all up and it was pissing down as well. And it was just horrific. Everyone's hungry. Everyone's tired. And I remember uh, the making us crawl down this clay ditch. It was like a little small, like valley, like a riverbed that was not wet enough to be overflowing, but it was definitely flowing that water. And they're making us like crawl through it all the way through until the sun was coming up. And I remember, I'm I specifically remember, I just started laughing and I don't know why no one else was laughing. I just started laughing. Bear in mind, I was 16, right? And these lads in training are like up to 30 year old. And you could see people were looking at me like, don't give the training team any reason to be doing this any longer with us. And I just started laughing and I couldn't help it because it was so ridiculous that I was doing this. It was so ridiculous. I was crawling through this clay valley at fucking stupid o'clock in the morning. I'd been doing it all night. I just, I don't know. I just started laughing. It was ridiculous. And the training team saw me laughing. And I remember specifically one of them was like, Jillings, why is Jillings laughing? Is this funny, is it? And then all of a sudden they were like, all right, I want everyone to start laughing. Like, and before you know it, everyone's laughing. And because everyone's laughing, it actually is funny. And so you start, everyone just starts laughing. And I remember we're getting done and we're in a line. And everyone's morale was through the roof. Everyone's morale was super high. And it was just because we just started laughing. And that was it. There was no, everyone felt like shit. Everyone wanted to cry. And yet because we were all laughing, it was just hilarious. And it helped us through a really shit moment. And I think the training team liked to see that type of, you know, group pick me up. That little bit of hope. Oh. Last point. Finally, Let's see what guys say. A, bell. a brass bell that hangs in the center of the compound for all the students to see. All you have to do to quit, all you have to do to quit is ring the bell. Ring the bell and you no longer have to wake up at five o'clock. Ring the bell and you no longer have to be in the freezing cold swims. Ring the bell and you no longer have to do the runs, the obstacle course, the PT, and you no longer have to endure the hardships of training. Mm. All you have to do is ring the bell to get out. If you want to change the world, don't ever ever ring the bell yes never give up it will not be easy Whew. start each day with a task completed find someone to help you through life respect everyone know that life is not fair and that you will fail often but if you take some risks step up when the times are the toughest face down the bullies lift up the downtrodden and never ever give up if you do these things the next generation and the generations that follow will live in a world far better than the one we have today. And what started here will indeed have changed the world for the better. Thank you very much. Ooh. Oh, what a great speech. What a great speech. Unbelievable. Yeah, I'm going to have to buy his book. Aren't I? Let me know if you want me to review his book on the channel and I'll certainly do that. All right, guys. Uh, I'll leave a link to the video down in the description. First line of the description, always check it out. It's by Motivational Hub. You should go check it out if you want to hear it, if you want to listen to it without me waffling over the top of it. Great video. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Does any of that resonate with you? Are you a former military lad or lass and resonate with any of that? I know it took a lot of that to get this right here. This green beret. It took a lot of that. Until next time, guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I love you all. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.